Today we'll be learning about hexadecimals and why hexadecimal number representation is used and why it's important. We'll answer these questions and learn a way to memorize the hex equivalents of binary. So we'll look at some binary numbers and see what those look like in hex form, which will help you in the future when dealing with binary numbers. It makes things a little easier. If you take one thing away from today, it should be the chart that we end up creating that will help you understand how to use the hex system efficiently. So let's first talk about one of the most important reasons for using hex. It's because it can represent a binary number in a compact form. And it also allows you to read numbers and letters easily without having to convert. Or if you do need to convert, it makes the overall conversion process easier. The one disadvantage I could say, so if we call this the advantages, it's really just another thing to memorize. So we'll just say dis over here is memorization. All right, let's make some room here for our chart because this will be about the most important thing that you can learn for hexadecimal usage. We'll first draw out a simple diagram here. And on this side, I'll put some binary. And on this side, I'll put the hex equivalent of that binary. So we first need to understand something about hex. How does it work? Well, hex is a base 16 numeric representation system. That's a complex way of just saying, let's start at zero and work our way down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, now we're kind of out of numbers, right? Because we loop back to zero and keep going. There's really no numbers that can be used anymore. So we have to actually continue on to using something else. What is that? Well, you can start using letters. So that's exactly what the hex system does. It starts using letters. So the next letters that we're going to use, first off, how many numbers do we have so far? We have 10 numbers up until this point. I'm just putting a little 10 subscript here. So we need to continue until we have 16 representations for this numbering system. So let's keep going by using an A, then a B, C, D, E, and F. So now we have 16 different representations for our base 16 hexadecimal numbering system. Awesome. So now you understand what hex is. It's a numbering system that goes from zero to F and in this order. That's really all you need to know about hexadecimal, but why is it so useful? Well, right now it doesn't look that useful. You got to memorize that it's from zero to nine and then A to F here, all in order. But let's see what the binary equivalent is. Also take a moment to check out learn.savvynick.com where you can learn more about Linux. I have a 25 page checklist that you can download. Make sure to check that out. So in binary form, zero is represented by Let's just use four zeros here. And then let's continue on down until we've filled up until F. So in order to represent a one in binary, we can just put zeros up front, zero, 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 and then a one. For a two, we can do zero, zero, one, zero. Notice what I'm doing here. So full zeros, this least significant bit became a one. Now I ran out of space, so I had to move the one up, put the last one to zero. So can you guess three? It's zero, zero, one, one. Well, now I've used both of these slots, so I'm gonna have to move up to this slot. So let's just do what's four, zero, one, zero, zero. And we keep continuing down just like that. So this one is zero, one, zero, one. Six is zero, one, one, zero. Seven is zero, one, one, one. Eight is going to be one, zero, zero, zero. Then we have nine, one, zero, zero, one. You see this pattern emerging. Then we have one, zero, one, zero for A. And we'll talk about this one in particular in a little bit. Let's not forget about A. Let's keep going. B is one, zero, one, one. C is one. We filled these two slots up. So this one becomes a one, zero, zero. Then we have D, one, one, zero, one. Then we have E, one, 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 zero. And finally F, one, 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 one. Isn't that satisfying? We have all of our binary representations in hex now. Now here's the beauty of it. You can now represent a, what's known as a nibble or four bits worth by a single hexadecimal. So if I wanted to say uh, one, 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 
that's equivalent to F in hexadecimal. Typically, hexadecimal is denoted something like this. If you have a zero and an X, and then an F following that, that just means this is a hexadecimal representation of something. There's other ways. Some people just use X right in front and put an F, or there's a pound sign and then an F, or another example maybe a percent sign and an F. There's many different forms here, and this is based on languages and the way that they represent them, or just what people are used to. Anyways, anyways, just make sure you put something up in front. That way you denote that you're using hex. So if 1111 is equal to F, like we made in our chart, then what if we did something like F and then A? Well, well, we could see that A is 1010. So let's put 1010 here for A. Now what happens now? Now we have two letters, an F and an A. Well, just in front of this A, we're gonna go look through our chart. Look up F, and that's a series of ones, so I'm gonna put one, 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 one. Well, look what I just did. I created a whole byte based on just using two letters over here in hexadecimal form. That's the power of hexadecimal. It represents binary very easily using a compact version of a numeric system. If that's the only thing you take away from this lesson today, well, that's great. And so we can keep doing this. So let's say we just did 0x and we'll say 27. So what is that equivalent to in binary? So we look up a 2. 2 is 0, 0, 1, 0. We look up a 7 and we have 0, 1, 1, 1. You're getting pretty good at this translation now. And let me show you a few more tricks. Well, zero is really easy to remember. So you always remember that zero is just zeros in binary. No problem there. Another easy one is one to memorize, right? So zero, 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 one is one in hexadecimal. Another easy one to remember, at least in my opinion, is seven. Seven is just zero, one, one, one. A is another one that's special, and that's why I have it highlighted here. It's a back and forth pattern of ones and zeros. So one, zero, one, zero. 1010. Zero, one, zero. That's easy to remember as well, as well as 5 does the opposite. 0101. Zero, one, zero, one. Another easy one to remember. Finally, F is just all ones. You know it ends at F, so you can memorize F pretty easily as well. And those are the ones I would start with. Start with 0, 1, 5, 7, A, and F. And once you got those, you have a very good starting place for hexadecimal representations of binary numbers. This is also great to learn for things like digital logic, programming, because it helps you create masks, and a lot of programmers tend to use this hexadecimal shorthand in order to represent binary numbers, because it just makes for less. You almost will never see it actually written out in binary form. Instead, you'll see hex, so you might even see math in hex. You could do something like F and F, which in digital logic, if you and ones together, right? F represents four ones, and it with four ones, bitwise, is all ones again. So this just equates to another F. Now you're noticing what kind of uses this has. If anything, write down this chart and keep practicing writing down the same chart over and over again. Start with the binary, and then the hexadecimal just falls in place. All you have to know about the hex is that it starts at zero, and when you get to nine, you start at A. Keep writing until you've reached 16 representations in this numbering system. That's it. It's fairly easy. I hope you learned something today. If you did, smash that like button for me. And if you made it this far, you might as well subscribe. You're enjoying the content. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.